So I guess you all know this, you come home after work or something late in the evening and your phone rings. And some weird guy is on the phone trying to sell you something. You're a typical telemarketer and you're all extremely pleased to have that conversation. <laughs> and just to be totally open in terms of uh, full disclosure, I was 17, I was earning great money, 25 bucks an hour. I was doing telephone marketing myself. I was selling the Saison Cruche, it's a Swiss kitchen magazine, and I was great with the elder ladies. They, they really <laughs> bought that kitchen magazine. Um, moving forward a couple of years, suddenly now I'm in the position where I get phone calls. Süd Deutsche Klassen Lottery. That's uh, some kind of German lottery thing, and they're trying to sell me tickets, you know, um, buy some kind of ticket, and every month there will be a drawing, and you'll win lots of money. And of course, you're somewhere, you know, on a business trip, different time zone, and you're trying to get rid of the guy. So I decide to have a bit of fun. I tell the guy, oh, great, that sounds interesting. Oh, thank you for calling me. Yes, oh, very, oh, just one second, one second. You put the phone down, you walk away. And after five minutes, they tend to hang up. <laughs> Things progress from there, and suddenly I start getting calls from magazines. Hello, we have a sponsor. You get 12 months free, and the 13th month, well, you have to pay a little, but, you know, pretty, pretty good deal, right? Um, and so my, my fun with them was I tried to make up fictional magazine titles. So they'd ask me, what kind of magazine would you like? We have all of them. Okay, what about uh, the magazine which talks about modern artillery pieces of the Swiss Armed Forces? <laughs> oh, you don't have that? Oh, no, that's the one I wanted. So unfortunately, you know, they would never have it. Um, things got even worse. You might be aware of that. Um, Swiss health insurers. Now's the time to, to, to switch your basic plan to a different one, and these guys are really aggressive. So they start calling me up. Huh? So, you know, I got uh, a bit angry and I start thinking about some numbers. Why do they have my phone number? How does that work? And very simply, if you just do a bit of math, you know, this is looking at the mobile phones in Switzerland. If you randomly dial a number, you have a 1 in 10 chance of actually getting a working number, which is pretty good. And you can look at the numbers yourself, but if you think about it a bit more, long story short, it will take them about an hour to make one sale. You can play around with the numbers slightly, but the key thing is dialing a wrong number takes literally zero time, zero seconds. So it takes about an hour to make a sale. And if you look at the cost of that a bit, approximately 40 Swiss francs is a fair assumption for fully loaded cost for making one single sale. Depending on where you're sourcing the work, you've got some overhead, but 40 Swiss francs is a fair, fair deal. Now, why does it work? It's not actually health insurance which call you, it's brokers. So some kind of broker calls you and he's trying to get an appointment with you. And what he then does, he takes that appointment with Mr. Kapal, he goes to the health insurance guy and he says, hey, for 50 bucks, you can have that appointment. So the only thing to successfully combat telephone marketing is to drive up the acquisition costs. Or in different words, you have to waste their time. If it becomes more expensive than those 50 bucks, it starts to hurt them. So, you know, next time I get a phone call, hi, the Swiss law changed, everything's different. Okay, you know, I didn't know about that. And of course, it's a flattened lie. So the Swiss law didn't change, but they'll tell you all kinds of weird things. They're from the information center and they lie to you. So what do you do when somebody lies at you? You lie right back. Oh, very interesting. Thank you for calling me. Oh, yes, yes. No, no, not really. No, that sounds perfect. It's exactly what I need right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So you, you hook them up into conversation. Oh, yes, I would love to meet you. Two days from today? Oh, great, 10 a.m.? Yes, oh, I live in Milam. I was born 1965. I'm very healthy. I'm in the highest insurance bracket. I'm a great customer. I would love to meet you. Okay, so, you know, you don't feel too good, but, you know, they lied at me. Little did I know, they're not stupid. They called me a day earlier. They sent me SMS. Hello, Mr. Kapal. You have an appointment tomorrow. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Great. I'm looking forward to meeting you, right? <laughs> um, and I confirmed by SMS that tomorrow I have a meeting. What happens the next day? Five minutes to 10, phone rings. Oh, hello, Mr. Kapal. I can't find your name on the, um, uh, uh, on the door. Um, of course, I gave him a wrong address. So the guy was somewhere in Milan and I live in Zurich. So what did I do then? <laughs> you lied to me, I lie right back at you. And I'm so happy I wasted your time. And then what do you do? You kind of hang up, right? But that's the whole point. Did I feel good about it? After a couple of minutes, yes. Because if you look at the numbers, I now wasted about 200 Swiss francs of their time. They lied at me, they tried to trick me into setting up a meeting, and by driving up the acquisition cost of 200 Swiss francs, I actually hurt them a little bit. So long story short, if you want to make the world a better place, sometimes you have to be a little bit evil. <laughs>